This is one serious bike. The Synker 24 is for hard charging kids who want a bike that rips just like the adult version. This model is sized for riders who are between 53 and 62 inches tall. A SRAM NX 1x11 drivetrain has a wide gear ratio. No front derailleur keeps shifting simple so kids can focus on the ride. Aggressive 24 inch tires are ready to hit the dirt. They sit on burly double wall rims that will stand up to everything your kid throws at them. Rough trails are no match for the 80mm Sun Tour suspension fork, allowing the rider to have fun diving into technical features. This wide handlebar gives a very stable feel. It lets the rider take a slightly wider stance, which provides more leverage, making it easier to keep on target at any speed. Hydraulic disc brakes are a must for serious riding, so of course we added those too, because having better control always ups the fun factor. Best of all, the Synker 24 ships Ready Ride, so with just four assembly steps, you can get to the trail and ride even sooner. Hi, I'm Brian. And I'm Kyle. You may have seen us on ABC's show Shark Tank, where we demonstrated our SureStop brake system on our Guardian bikes. But there are a lot of other factors that go into making Guardian bikes the safest kids' bikes on the block. Here are the top eight things that our customers love about Guardian bikes. Number, Number one. one. SureStop brake technology. My daughter sustained a concussion based on the braking system system on her old bike. I'm a surgeon that deals with trauma situations on an everyday base. So when I went looking for a safer solution for my daughter's next bike, the sure stop system was a no-brainer. A focus on safety. We know that he's safe on it. It's beautifully engineered with safety as first objective. When my granddaughter's old enough, I'll be buying another Guardian bike, that's for sure. Easy assembly. I ordered online. It was a little le leery about about doing that, but it worked out perfectly. The bike to ride pre-assembled, and all I had to do was attach the handlebars and the pedals. It took about five minutes. No coaster brakes. I'm so glad that we avoided coaster brake. When when she starts to lose her balance, she pedals backward and regains her balance, and she is able to pedal forward. If she had a coaster brake, her bike would stop every time she pedaled backward. Lightweight. The bike is very light compared to other models. We have seen at the big box stores, so it's easier to transition to her bigger girl bike. Ride size or software. Buying a bike online was a little nerve-wracking, but Guardian has, has a great tool to help you get the right size and see when your child will outgrow the bike. They were right on target. It was a perfect fit. Cool factor. My son loves it. It can be tough to find a high quality kids bike that looks cool too and Guardian does a terrific job. Over the top customer service. Where I learned that Guardian is really excels is with their customer service. I was mistakenly installing when the one of the pedals incorrectly and when I emailed the company on Saturday morning with a question they got back to me within a hour both an email and a phone call per suddenly walked me through to answer my question even though it was my mistake they went out of their way to help so those are eight reasons that our customers love Guardian bikes and we love our Guardian bikes and yeah they always like Thank you for purchasing a Raleigh bike for your child. Nothing is better for making a lifelong cyclist than starting them early with a great bike. As you open the box, you'll see there is some assembly required. If you have never built a bike before, this process will probably take you up to 120 minutes. If you are handy with tools, expect to spend around 80 to 100 minutes. If you have done some bike wrenching before but never actually built a bike, you'll need 60 to 80 minutes. And if you are an expert bike mechanic, you can probably be finished within 30 to 60 minutes. 
Grab the box containing your small parts and get started. You'll need some tools for assembly, including a metric Allen wrench, bike grease, a tire pump, screwdrivers, cable cutters, and an adjustable wrench. Before you insert the seat post, smear some grease on the post to make installation and adjustments easier. Make sure you push it past the minimum insertion line. Close the quick release or tighten the seat post clamp bolt. You'll know your seat post is tight enough if you can't twist it side to side. Check that your stem is facing forward along with your fork. You may need to turn your fork forward to line them both up. If you are unsure which way the fork goes, make sure the bolts will be in front of the fork leg. Tighten the two pinch bolts evenly. The wrench should leave an imprint on your palm when it's tight enough. If your stem looks like this, it's called a quill or threaded stem. Grease the body of the quill and the bolt to make inserting and adjustment easy. Push down on the bolt head with your thumb and insert the stem past the minimum insertion line. After aligning the stem and fork forward, snug the bolt down. The wrench should leave an imprint on your palm when the bolts are tight enough. Remove the faceplate bolts and the faceplate. and center your handlebars. Tighten the bolts evenly and snugly. And check to make sure you have an equal gap on the top and bottom. To install the wheels, take the plastic caps off the wheel and loosen the bolts enough that you can fit the axle into the dropouts of the fork. Now tighten the bolts evenly by hand until they are snug, then fully tighten them with your wrench. You'll know the bolts are tight enough when the wrench leaves an imprint on your palm. If your bike comes with a quick release, slide the quick release through the hub with one conical spring on each side. Grease the threads and thread the nut on loosely. Put the front wheel in the fork and begin to tighten the quick release. When you close the lever, it should tuck up near the fork leg, and when it's tight enough, the lever will leave an imprint on your palm. After you get your front wheel on, check the back wheel for proper tightness too. All pedals are right and left specific, so be careful as to which pedal goes where. Use a small dab of grease on the threads. The right pedal goes on the side with a chain and threads in clockwise. The left pedal goes on the non-chain side and threads in counterclockwise. Snug your pedals with a pedal wrench or a thin adjustable wrench. V-brakes have two separate arms connected together by the brake cable. After threading the cable into the brake lever and through the cable housing, pass it through the brake noodle and the pinch bolt. Now center the brake pads so they contact the rim evenly. Slide the noodle into the hinged arm, then test the system and adjust as needed. If one brake pad contacts the rim before the other, tighten this adjustment screw on the opposite arm to even them out. To adjust your rear derailleur, Turn the cranks and shift the chain to the smallest cog in the back. Use the high limit screw to center the derailleur underneath the smallest cog. Undo the pinch bolt, pull the slack out of the cable, and retighten. While turning the cranks, shift up into the lowest gear. Now you can use the low limit screw to center the derailleur underneath the largest cog. To adjust your front derailleur, shift into the smallest chain ring in the front and the largest cog in the back. Use the low limit screw to position the inner plate as close as you can to the chain without touching it. Loosen the pinch bolt to pull the slack out of the cable and retighten. While turning the cranks, shift up into the largest chain ring in the front and the smallest cog in the back. Now you can use the high limit screw to position the outer plate of the derailleur as close to the chain as you can without touching it.
Put the red reflector on the seat post and the white one on your handlebars. Safety first. Cut any extra cable down with your cutters and pinch a cable end on with your pliers to keep the cable from fraying. If your bike has plastic bolt caps, push those on to protect your rider. Then pump up the tires following the guidelines on the sidewalls. You'll also want to double check the tightness of the seat post and handlebars. Then your little one is ready to go for a ride.